Okay, so now we're on to actually building the drawers. Now, I went ahead and built a couple of the drawers already and installed them. So that way you could sort of see what's going on. As you can see right here, this is the drawer slide. That distance from the side of your drawer to the actual frame or the, the uh, rail here is a half inch on either side. So a half inch here, half inch here. So your drawer box from here to here is with these slides right here an inch smaller than the opening. You need to make sure whatever slides you use you check their directions to make sure you're complying with that because if your drawer is slightly bigger or slightly less than you'll have all sorts of problems and you don't want that. Now depth, I'm making mine a square box because of the way we have it set up so that way it makes my cuts a lot easier. So 16 and 7 8 is the magic number for this one. The nicest thing about building drawers is having the right tools to build them. Right here it's a precision miter gauge and the reason why I love this is because, again, I can do repetitious cuts. I can lock down my stop and make the same cut over and over and over again, ensuring that the box will stay square and simple. So I'm going to start making some cuts. Um, I've already ripped them to 10 inches in width, and now all I have to do is slide it in, grab my glasses, and then just start making cuts. The reason why I went with 16 and 7 eighths is to give me a little breather room in the back of the drawer to account for uh, what I have as far as my back supports. You'll see that when we install that later. Now this one, it's a little bit kind of a fuzzy on the edge as you can see it. What I'm going to do is lift my stop, shave a little bit off, like that, move that out of the way, flip it, drop the stop again. Nice thing is, is that stop can come up and down. Makes for a nice clean and smooth cut. So there's three right there real quick. Cut one more. Okay, so all of our drawers are cut to size. And what we're gonna do is fancy up the top. Basically, we're gonna veneer the top of the plywood because this exposed edge right here doesn't look very pretty. It doesn't look very finished. So to do that, we're going to use this right here. This is a, an iron-on. It's already got the glue on it. It is the same exact species as our plywood here, which is birch. So all you do is you buy this. Cut off the one end. The, the, the beauty in this is that the glue is already on it. So we come and take it. We cut it to like a rough length, so it's a little bit longer. You stick... Whoop. Oh my gosh. There we go. Throw that over there now. We're done with that. So now all you do is you stick it on. This is a little bit thicker than the actual plywood. So it hangs over the edges. So all you do is kind of find the middle roughly. Grab yourself an iron. Now I stole this from my wife many, many years ago. And after you use it, she doesn't want it back. So just say it. It's $15. Very, very simple. All you're doing is heating up the glue on this little veneer strip and it's sticking right to your plywood. Just go kind of relatively slow. You don't want to skip by because you want to activate the glue. All you're doing is the glue on the back when you heat it, it melts and then when you pull the heat off it cures. Pushing it down into place and then we grab a J roller, which is right here. Nothing more than a roller to just make sure that you got it all nice and flat and you've embedded all the glue. Now comes the fun part. You can see it hangs a little bit on the side, hangs a little bit on the front. This is a tool, it's a dual trimmer. So it trims both sides of this veneer. My, the old way I used to do it was grab a block plane and then just sort of very, very lightly do that. That takes a little bit of time, and I don't want to take time to do stuff. So I just grab this little laminate trimmer, or this veneer trimmer, I squeeze it, and then just run it right down like that. And all you're doing is peeling off these little shavings. And normally, two strokes will do it, and you have a perfectly veneered piece of plywood. Now if you look at it from this way, and this way, it looks like a solid piece, so it looks nice and finished. 
Now, I don't normally leave the edges just like that. I'll grab a little bit of sandpaper and just roll over the edges ever so slightly, just so it's not so sharp. And then, when that's done, I take it from here. Now, we have the jig still all set up, all ready to go at the same exact width that we wanted it to before. So instead of trying to trim off that veneer with scissors or a, a utility knife, all I gotta do is throw it in there, throw my glasses on, and then just trim that little bit of veneer right there on the table saw. With that stop set, it's really simple, and you know it's gonna be perfect. And there you go. Looks like a solid piece. Just like that, check it out. You can't even tell that it's plywood. And that's the nice part right there. Looks very finished and it's perfect for drawers. So for all of our drawers, they're gonna be basically boxes. Now for the bottom of the drawers, you could take the material, this is a quarter inch MDF, and just nail it into the bottom. But that would fall apart just like that. So what we're gonna do is create a little dado right in our drawer. So to set up our table saw blade to do that, I have one of my new favorite things right here. These are setup blocks that Craig has that helps me set the blade height and the depth away from the fence. We'll first start with the height of the blade. Because our material is three quarters of an inch thick or thereabouts, I want this to go into our material by about three-eighths of an inch. So, because that's half a three-quarter. So, I'm going to take my three-eighths setup block and just drop it right on top of my blade and just lower it down until it's perfectly flat on the bottom. I normally let it go all the way down and then just run it up a little bit so it lifts or tilts like that and then drop it down so it sits uh, flat. So now we know the height of the blade is exactly 3 eighths of an inch. You, can, you don't have to do this anymore where you grab the tape measure and you're trying to find where exactly the tooth hits the tape measure to make sure that you have a perfect measurement. Throw it away. Get yourself a pair of these. They're very, very helpful. So we, the height of our blade right now is 3 eighths of an inch. But what we want to do is create a groove here. We want it a quarter of an inch off of the bottom. So all I'm going to do is grab my quarter of an inch. Where'd she go? Oh, here it is. This not only is a quarter, wait, I threw it in the wrong one, that's why. So this distance from here to here is not only a quarter of an inch, but also the distance from here to here. So I want to be off the bottom. I stick it right there along the blade. I normally, I want to be very careful because I don't want to hurt the, uh, the carbide on the teeth. That now is a quarter inch gap. I can pull it out, lock my blade down, and stick it away, and I'm done. Now, I can take my sides. I know that the depth of my blade is 3 8 because I set it up. I know that it's a quarter of an inch away, so all I got to do is run the piece. Now, you could use a dado set with a quarter inch and set it up like that, but I'm going to show you how to use it simply with a single blade and just keep tapping the fence. As you can see, it's half the thickness of the plywood, so that way our uh, panel will sit in there nicely. And it's only an eighth of an inch thick because that's the thickness or the curve of our blade. So that's not going to fit our panel because our panel's a quarter of an inch thick. So we're going to take this piece, now put it here, and run all of our other pieces at the same time. Make sure there's always a good side and a bad side to plywood. So think about what you want to see on the inside and the outside of the drawer. I think that'll be the inside. So we're going to run this one. And we're going to run them all at the same time. Make sure your veneer is facing away from your cut. Boom. Okay, last one. So now we have the same groove in every one of our boards, but we want to scoot the blade over just a little bit. What I do, you can just simply tap the fence 
just release it and tap it to the right. But what I do is if you see the kerf right here in my zero clearance, I can see that it matches exactly where the shell, where the other kerf is on the piece of wood. It matches perfectly. So all I'm going to do is scoot it over to that exact point. So now when I run the blade, I'm not overlapping too much and I'm not being too shy. And then we'll run it on all four. We'll see what our fit is like. There you go. Now I know it fits. I can take this out of the way, put this piece down over here, and then grab my pieces and run them on all of them, on all of these pieces. You want to make sure, see there's no, there's no small little pieces of, of uh, wood in there, so I know I didn't go too far as far as the overlapping of the joint goes there. At this point, you know the drill. Attach pocket holes. I put three on either side. You're only going to need to do two of the sides instead of all four because those are the front and the back. Make sure that you do not drill the pocket hole through the groove that you just created. Keep it away from the edge a little bit and you'll be safe. Add a little bit of glue and a right angle clamp to hold the two pieces of plywood together so when you run your pocket screws in, nothing shifts out of place. Okay, so to put the drawer together, all we're doing is our front just like that pocket hold right here to our sides. So what will happen is, is when we have the uh, facing on the front of the drawer like this, you won't see those pocket holes. So it's a way to, to kind of uh, keep them hidden, if you will, so nobody will know what joinery you're actually using. Not that it matters, but now we cut our panel or our bottom, if you will, at 17 and uh, what, 17, 7, 16 by 7 and 7 sixteenths. Yes, that's what I wrote on the panel. So all that does is slide right in the grooves, just like that. Make sure that it seats well over there. Pop it in place. Now you don't glue this. We take our back and we stick it just like that. And then attach the back with pocket screws as well. My back is a little bit inset uh, rather than making it flush, just sort of a preference. Okay, so now you're going to want to make sure that your drawer box is square because if it's a little bit off when you install it, it's just never going to work right. Now you can manipulate it now while the glue is drying uh, and all you're going to do to make sure that yours is, your drawer is square is measure your diagonals, measure across. So 24 and 7 eighths and 24 and 7 eighths, that's a good thing. So now we know our drawer is completely square. Now it's actually time to install it into our carcass here.